Kamera, akcja. Welcome to another episode of Seco Talks. Today we have Grzegorz Głuchowski. Hello. Hello Adam. Nice to be here. Nice to see you. And our subject is deep freezing. Grzegorz, if you can say what is deep freezing and why this is so important in heat treatment. Of course. So, uh, as you can see, I just poured myself a nice cold drink. Yeah. Uh, but you do Indeed. not want to drink it. Yeah. This is actually liquid nitrogen. And what is deep freezing is uh, that we use liquid nitrogen to cool down the parts inside the furnace, inside the vacuum furnace, to below 70C degree, minus 70C mm -hmm. degree. Uh, it is also known as sub uh, zero treatment or. One question. You mean cooling down below 70C degree, but after hardening process? Yes, of course. This is done after hardening process. Uh, and this is done to limit or decrease the number of retained austenite. Or reduce. Or re yeah. yeah, reduce the, the number of, uh, of amount of um, retained austenite in, into, inside okay, the Okay, so why to reduce the retained austenite? So, uh, retained austenite is, a, is not a stable phase, meaning that uh, maybe apart from some very special applications, it is not uh, necessarily a welcomed phase, welcomed structure inside the, uh, the parts. And that is why we want to get rid of retained austenite. And uh, this helps us to increase the hardness of the parts and also to improve the dimensional stability of the parts. Okay, so I understand it's important in some measuring equipment and so on, yeah? the stability of Yes, of exactly. This is, this is a crucial point in industries that require very high repeatability and uh, accuracy in their processes, okay. like tools and dice, for example. And the less amount of retained austenite, the higher hardness on the surface. Yes. So do you know what are the ranges of uh, acceptable levels of retained austenite in the structure? So, uh, well, of course, it depends on the application parts yes. and so on. Usually it's between 10 and 20 percent of retained austenite within the parts. I remember from some discussions with our customers that in, especially in military or defense industry, uh, there is no tolerance for retained austenite. So <laughs> amount close yeah. to zero <laughs> yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. Also in minting industry, if we, if we have the uh, punching dice for the coins, uh, they also require a very high um, dimensional stability. So there it's also applicable. Okay. Grzegorz, what does our system look like in a vacuum furnace? Can you explain it? So first of all, we need to start with a liquid nitrogen tank. Of course, not as this one. We need to have a quite large pressurized liquid nitrogen tank. From this tank, we need to somehow transport liquid nitrogen into the furnace. In a liquid form? In a liquid form, of course. And uh, to do this, we usually recommend to use a vacuum insulated piping. Can we use the same liquid nitrogen as for the gas quenching? Yes, this is exactly the same liquid nitrogen. Okay. But for gas quenching, we use it already after uh, changing it into evaporation. The, yeah, after evaporation to, to, to changing the liquid nitrogen into gas state. Mm -hmm. And uh, with deep freezing, we still need to use the liquid form as it is better, let's say, for cooling down yeah. or deep freezing the parts. And uh, yeah, as I said, we need this uh, liquid nitrogen tank. Then we need a piping to uh, transport, transfer the liquid nitrogen uh, to the furnace. On the furnace, there is a special cryogenic installation with a set of different valves. One of the valves being a valve to precisely control the flow of liquid nitrogen to the furnace uh, on the basis of actual temperature and also the pressure in the furnace. The system automatically adjusts uh, amount of liquid nitrogen that goes into the furnace, so the user does, doesn't uh, need to do anything. It's basically automated. And inside the furnace, we've got a special graphite nozzle just above the uh, blades of the convection fan. Uh, we inject liquid nitrogen in liquid form on the blades of the convection fan. And 
the motion of the convection fan helps us to distribute liquid nitrogen evenly in the hot zone, in the load, and this in turn helps us to very precisely and evenly cool down the whole load inside the furnace up to minus 70, minus 80 C degree to complete this uh, retained austenite transformation into mountain. It heat. means we can make a deep freezing just after the hardening process in the same chamber of the furnace yes. without unloading the parts from yes. the furnace. Yes, that is, that is additional benefit. Mm -hmm. If we make every step in the whole process, meaning that we do not need to take out the parts uh, first of all from the furnace, then transfer them to the separate deep freezing machine, because if we do it, after taking out the parts from the deep freezing machine, they look like this. Yes, yeah? yes. And this um, helps, let's say, to create corrosion on the parts. And exactly. especially in aerospace business, this is not required, this is yeah. unacceptable. And having the whole process in the same furnace uh, helps us to avoid such a phenomena uh, in the It's great. And you don't need a separate deep freezing machine. You can do no. it in the same equipment. No, you, can, you can do it in the same equipment. And maybe, yeah, uh, one more point. So you can deep freeze the parts, but also liquid nitrogen is useful to it deep freeze the parts. Do you like, fruit? parts. Do you like fruits? Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's check how they will let's, taste. Let's make small experiment. Let's make small experiment. Okay. It's bubbling. Let's say that's also a nice phenomena, how it bubbles. It boils, so basically. It will be a very healthy episode today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pity it's, uh, it's not summer, yeah, so that we can cool us down with some freezed berries. OK. You already explained uh, what does it mean, what are the benefits, how the system looks like, and how about maybe not from the processing point of view, but from the efficiency point of view, how we can shorten the process time? Uh, well, that's also a very good question, uh, because uh, maybe to start with, I will tell you about the, the interesting story, short story, that led to this. So we had a meeting with one of our customers, and uh, the customer had a challenge from their customer. Uh, they needed their parts to be cooled down to room temperature, and room, and room temperature was specified as 20 C degree. Okay. Like in the room. Like in the room, <laughs> yeah. Nice lab room as we have yeah. today uh, with air conditioning. But actually to obtain 20 C degree in a vacuum furnace is a tricky one mm -hmm. because you need to have a very sophisticated, complex and expensive water cooling From my system. experience, what I know, if we cool down just by gas quenching in the vacuum furnace, we can go below 40 Celsius, uh, 40 C degree. But it's very, it's not easy to cool down below. Yes, it, of course, it all depends on the water cooling system that you have. And especially in the summertime, it's, it's exactly. very hard to go below 40 C degree. It requires additional chillers or evaporative uh, cooling towers. And it's, it's more complex. It's process. more complex, yes. yes. And uh, during one of the brainstorming sessions, one of our designers, best regards to Radek, uh, came up with a brilliant idea of using liquid nitrogen to cool down, to speed up the cooling down process from this 60 or 40 C degree up to 20 C degree. The customer liked this idea very much and we implemented this in their next furnace. Mm -hmm. And this helped them to reduce the total process time by a significant amount of, uh, of time. Uh, so in short, it helps to save money and uh, make the whole heat treatment process much, much faster. Faster, cheaper, and uh, what I understand also the surface quality is uh, better if we make deep freezing in the same machine just after the hardening. Am I right? Yes, that's, that's right. Uh, of course, it affects parts during the deep freezing and also during, during this, let's say, cooling down to room temperature as well. And I think our snacks are ready. Okay, and this is desserts for today. Those are, yeah, those are desserts for today. 
Okay, Grzegorz. So, thank you for your explanation. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you for making you, the, the, the real deep, you. The, thank you for <laughs> the real deep freezing process, as we can see here. And I think that's it. So, once again, thank you for watching us, and thank please you. follow Seco Talks. See you next time. See you. Cheers, Adam. Cheers. <laughs>